Thank you very much for staying on the program. Well back, welcome back to the marketplace. Now, in our first story, local currency, uh, the Ghana CD, has inched up to the five CD mark and is now selling at one dollar for what is now selling at four Ghana CDs, 50 pesos for one dollar. It follows the week's significant depreciation against the dollar. This is despite additional measures announced by the Bank of Ghana to halt the CDs free fall in value. But is this an indication managers are failing the fight to stabilize the CD? George Raffi tells us more. The recent sharp decline in the value of the Ghana CD has been attributed mainly to two things. That is, the recent report sought to suggest that some 7 billion Ghana CD spent by the previous administration was not disclosed, a development that caused some panic among investors in our bonds, resulting in some drop. Another reason is a surge in dollar demand by companies to finance imports for the rest of the year. For some, the city's problem is basically a demand and supply issue. So if the Bank of Ghana has increased supply on the market, that should address the challenge. But it looks like that is not enough. The city from the beginning of this year has depreciated by more than 5% against the U.S. dollar. For some market analysts, it looks like some of these measures are not being felt on the ground. That is why we are still experiencing this problem. The development could cause some panic, resulting in excessive demand for dollars, especially for those who want to protect their investments. But this is something that the chief executive of AGI, said Chuma Kobwa, wants to be halted quickly. We shouldn't worry too much because it's actually a cycle. Uh, we need to quickly move in to make sure that it doesn't drag too long. And, and the key part of sometimes the city depreciation is the speculation. I don't think that at this stage we, just, we should speculate. There's no point in speculating that it's going to depreciate also. So let me, even if I have CDs, let me go and mobilize some dollars and keep it so that if the city depreciates further, I don't lose. I don't think we should get into that panic mode at this stage um, it, because it's a normal cycle. Uh, but of course, what we expect to see is measures to make sure that it's contained within reasonable limits, and then we'll live with it. Another say the continuous slide in the value of the city, if not halted, could worsen things for the already challenging economy as it could increase the cost of servicing the country's loans, hikes in price of goods and services, because we import majority of what we consume locally, hikes in prices of petroleum products, and an increase in the cost of living. Now, UT Bank is promising to be back on its foot strongly before the end of the year, uh, the first quarter of this year. According to the bank, the turnaround strategies being implemented are yielding the desired results. The bank has been going through what some may describe as crisis um, affecting its ability to e even release financial statements to its investors. The challenge has come about as a result of delays by businesses in paying back loans secured and also the slowdown in the economy as well as the energy crisis. Co-founder of the UT Bank, Prince Kofi Amwabeng, tells Joy Business, UT will soon recapture its position as the most vibrant local bank in the country. Simply put, you know the economy went through a downturn with uh, high interest rates, um, the oil sector problems, um, government not paying uh, contractors on time, the doom, so a whole lot of things. So businesses actually suffered and therefore, and you know UT's position as uh, a lending institution because of, our, of our, uh, where we're coming from. So. Long story short, we had a lot of non-performing loans on our books. Well, some of the companies just couldn't pay. Because if you are not being paid by the government, you cannot pay. If the livestock, your business is run down or closed, you cannot pay, and so on and so forth. Um, but if you cannot pay, there's something else too. It will take us some time to collect the monies or some of the monies. But the Bank of Ghana requires that you actually provide for it now. See, within a year, write it off. And if you go to court, it takes maybe, if, if you are lucky, three, four, five years. So net effect is that we have a lot of non-performing loans. And we put in uh, measures to recapitalize the bank, look at the way our operations work, um, recover the monies. Um, look, if you look at the risk management around what we're doing so that if, if this situation really okay, it's not going to affect us and so on and so forth. So we are in a turnaround mode. And I think the position now is that uh, we, it's a bit delayed because first there was elections coming. So investors are like, let's see what happens, African elections or Ghanaian elections. Now, 
I think the when uh, this guy, uh, MPP won, the issue is what's next. What what are they planning? But I'm sure that by the end of the first this first quarter, we'll have the necessary capital in place, restructure the bank as we have, and have additional investors, and actually uh, see our fortunes turn around. You talk about additional investors, and that's where my concern is, as a bank that was thriving so much as a local bank. Are we going to see that structure changed for a majority holder taking over the bank or still having more shares being allocated to collective investors who might not necessarily be local firms? Um, I think let's be fair. What is important is saving the bank and turning things around. At this stage, really, if you ask me, it's not about Kofi Amwa being having majority stake in the bank. But we saving the bank that is dear to the people and it's a good indigenous story. So in other words, what I'm saying is that if the investors are coming from Ghana, good, I'll, I'll love that. But if we have to bring in some more foreign investors uh, to save the situation, we'll do that because uh, we respect the depositors' monies and what the bank means to Ghana more than uh, we the original owners or founders or whatever. The statistical service has revealed adequate funding has been made available towards rebasing the economy. This year, the economic review would see some parameters that have become irrelevant in the current system removed, whilst other key ones also included. This is to ascertain the real economic growth since 2012, the last time a similar exercise was carried out. has kick-started the rebasing process at the Living Standard Survey. Timely release of funding has always been a challenge. But acting government statistician Ban Wadia says government and donor agencies have allocated funds for the exercise. We want to update the, the basket to take account of the variations in the waste, to take account of the introduction of new products which are significant, to take account of markets which are no longer in existence, and all that so that we bring in new markets and so on. And how much is that going to cost us? I don't have the figures with me here. But if you want, we will later finish you with that. I we, have, we have assurances of funding? Yeah. We have assurance of funding. Uh, within or without? Mainly within. Mainly within. Yeah. He adds, the service will also be increasing to 400, the number of items in the basket of goods and services used in the determination of inflation to ensure data released is more representative. After five years, most static bases start losing their, um, their effects in terms of accurate reportage. So we go back to the drawing board and rebase so that we take up account of current changes in the expenditure patterns or consumption patterns of, the, uh, of households. And that is what we intend to do. We had the last Ghana Living Standards Survey Round 6, which reported largely on the expenditure of households. And we want to use that to actually um, adjust our weights so that our ways reflect more current expenditure patterns of households. This is live on the marketplace. Moving on, the United Kingdom has expressed its commitment to support Ghana's bid to become Africa's major health tourism destination. The Ministry of Health initiated a policy in 2012 to make Ghana a health tourism destination in Africa by creating specialized health centers for the treatment of complicated diseases. UK Prime Minister's trade envoy to Ghana, Adam Efriye, says his country is ready to make investments in Ghana towards realizing this goal. UK Prime Minister's trade envoy to Ghana, Adam Efriye, was speaking to journalists in Accra after the announcement of an $18.5 million contract awarded British healthcare procurement and engineering solutions firm CTEC by the government of Ghana. The contract will see CTEC supply medical equipment to nine selected hospitals in Ghana. Mr. Fia was hopeful this would be the first of many such deals as the UK looks to increase exports and investments to Ghana. 
um, the vibrancy of the business environment here in Ghana, I think it really bodes well for the future long-term relationship between our two nations. And when it comes to the expertise that Britain can bring to Ghana, and when it comes to the capital and the investments that we can make, I think there's no better example than in the healthcare system here in Ghana. Um, and with the new Ghanaian Minister for Health, um, um, who's only been in place for 10 days, um, we've spoken quite extensively a little bit earlier, and it's quite clear that he has a vision for Ghana becoming the health tourism capital of Africa, if you like. And I think that the contract awarded to CTEC in supporting those services um, bodes very well for UK-Ghana relations, but for Ghana's relationships with the rest of the world. Minister of Health Kukwajima Menu on his part urged more private sector participation in the health sector. His Excellency President Anado, we want to see an expanded healthcare infrastructure such that we can produce and provide quality healthcare equitably distributed across the nation. And it is some of these interventions that will help us realize the, the dreams that our president have. And um, we have committed ourselves to work so far as we continue to get such investments. We're looking forward to attract private sector participation into healthcare delivery in our country. And I believe this is one of the few things that we'll see in future. The National Planning Committee of the Ghana 60 celebration is warning the general public against piracy of its anniversary cloth. Speaking with Joy Business, spokesperson of the committee, Jefferson Saki, reveals that a special board will be constituted to regulate the sales and pricing of the cloth. He said until then, it will be illegal to purchase it from anywhere. I mean, in all other years, we've realized that uh, during such anniversaries, people just go out of Ghana and print stuff and bring it in. Uh, this year, we thought that it is not a great thing to do. Uh, if you do that, you are not giving opportunity to the local textile industry to be able to develop. And so what we are doing is that we actually contracted a local textile a manufacturing company to take responsibility, to take charge of our independent anniversary cloth, uh, cloth, which is quite good because at the end of the day, it's going to open up for business, for uh, the local industry. Uh, the challenge here, which we think is so crucial, is that you are tasking or they are being tasked to ensure that in doing that, they should be able to put down uh, great security measures so that even if people are going to copy, it's going to be very difficult for them to do. Uh, well, the, the essence for us releasing this press statement, for example, is because we realized that people have created various logos, you know, with the same Ghana 60 years old name and, and all that. And so when you have a market flooded with all kinds of uh, clothing, you, it's very difficult to depict or identify which one is the original. And that is why we thought that it was so important, it was so crucial for us to come up together and then, and then have a unified, uh, you know, cloth that will be acceptable by all in the industry. Uh, in, in saying that, I think that what is very important is also got to do with the cost. We are, we are budgeting in such a way that uh, this cloth will be extremely affordable to all Ghanaians who wants to have part of it. Of course, because at the end of the day, it becomes a souvenir that you can put down 10 years, 20 years from now. You can talk to your kids and say that it was during Ghana's 60th independent anniversary that these clothes were made. Speaking on the cost, we have issues related to irregularities on the pricing. People would want to hold the cloth so that the demand for it is going to be high so that they could increase the price. What specific measures is the Commission putting in place to regulate pricing across board in the local sector? I think the control is, is very, very important. The, the National Planning Committee is going to take control of uh, how many pieces gets out, even to our various regions and all that. Um, we are still in talk with, with you know, various manufacturing companies uh, who basically do the distribution of these clothes and all that. And, and these are concerns that we've raised over and over again, especially at the National uh, Planning Committee level, uh, which people are actually very serious about. And from all indications, I can tell you for a fact, the, the uh, Planning Committee is, is, very, um, in, is very much in the know of this and is putting together every measure to ensure that um, the originality of the approved clothes uh, is very intact and that nobody is able to you know, get out of this country, either to China or India or any other country, you know, to bringing fake ones.
spokesperson of the National Planning Committee of the Ghana 60 uh, celebration, Jefferson Saki. Now, moving on, President Anna Adodanko Akufuado is scheduled to um, give the State of the Nation address pursuant to Article 67 of the Constitution tomorrow. Now, Ghanaians are in high spirit to hear the President, who, who won the December 7 election on a change campaign to speak of the nation address. Now, we have the, on the line the President of the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, James Asaraji, to tell us what industry are also looking out to hear from the President's address. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the Marketplace. Uh, good afternoon. Now, so what, are the expect All right, so what are the expectations from industries uh, tomorrow, ahead of tomorrow's presentation? Uh, thank you once again. Um, what industry is looking forward um, to uh, in respect for the State of the Nation's address, uh, first and foremost, is for His Excellency to tell us the actual state of the nation. Where are we as a country? Uh, in terms of macroeconomic uh, indicators, uh, you would agree with me that the country in the past three, four years had really gone through turbulence uh, by way of uh, unfavorable uh, economic uh, conditions. Uh, high interest rates in excess of 30%. You have this challenge of uh, power I mean, to industry. And then also, uh, we have uh, depreciation um, of our currency. But these are all huge uh, challenges that our industry has faced. So we want to know uh, how these situations are going to be more or less uh, arrested, such that businesses can uh, bounce back and then uh, have that level of confidence in the economy. Again, let me also mention that we're looking forward to pragmatic uh, uh, sort of uh, programs and activities that would help the government be able to uh, inject new sort of uh, confidence in the economy for businesses to thrive. We're looking forward to what are the various uh, strategies that the new administration is going to adopt, mm. you know, to care. Uh, high interest rates. Uh, let us understand that, you know, as a country, if we are competing with uh, I mean, companies or businesses that are coming from jurisdictions where interest rates are in uh, single digits, uh, definitely it will be a big uh, challenge, I mean, for us to be competitive. Uh, what, are, uh, what is the government going to do uh, to ensure that there's availability of uh, power for industry? Uh, beyond availability of power, we are also looking at affordability. Uh, we, at the moment, more or less, are experiencing a situation where Ghana seems to be the highest, you know, by way of uh, electricity tariffs in the top region. Right. Uh, as, a, as a business and as, as, a, as a manufacturing company, there's no way you can compete in this particular circumstance. Now, Mr. So Mr. Jay, one, one would say that all these assurances have already been given, uh, you know, prior to or during the election, during the campaign, and even after the elections. Now, what specifics are, are industry requiring from, from, from the president? You know, uh, there's one thing given general uh, policy direction, you know, uh, by way of making, I mean, promises you know, uh, maybe on campaign from uh, platform. And there's another thing, ensuring that there are programs, there are activities, or let me say, in a broader perspective, strategies, you know, to ensure that some of these things can be achieved over this period of time. Uh, for example, what are we doing such that uh, uh, industry can enjoy, I mean, cheaper power? And AGI has proposed uh, over the period a solution which we think that when implemented, I mean, would help industry uh, at least I mean, right. have uh, some respite. For example, uh, we say that if uh, power tariffs can be reclassified, you know, for industry to pay the right tariff, not continuing subsidizing, I mean, residential power users, then definitely, right. I mean, it's going to help industry also uh, to really breathe that side right. of respite. Yeah. Uh, Mr. J, finally, before you go, uh, what are the inputs that the AGI has made 
um, towards the upcoming budget, 2017 budget? Now, AGR has uh, really spoken about uh, multiplicity of taxes. I mean, such that there are certain taxes which are nuisance taxes. Um, uh, some of them, I'm going to mention a few of them. Uh, for example, the 5% uh, duty on raw material. We have also uh, indicated that there are some taxes that uh, have outlived their period. Uh, that those taxes with sunset clauses, which should have expired I mean, uh, in terms of the, their duration or implementational period. So all these areas we have uh, outlined, and we have mentioned categorically that if we really want to ensure that businesses do well, then we must be able to look at our tax buildup, which okay. we think that is I mean, uh, very unfavorable uh, to industry, in particular and businesses in general. All right. All right. Thank you very much for your attention, Mr. James Sayoji. He is the president of the Association of Ghana Industries, and he was sharing with us expectations ahead of tomorrow's presentation of the State of the Nation Address by President Nana Adudankwa Kufuado. And on that note, we draw down the curtains on this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Many thanks for watching. Do join again same time tomorrow for more stories. My name is Imano Apuaji. Yeah. Good afternoon.